Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Thursday, November 30th, 2023 edition of Trading Places Live at EarningsBeats.com. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist here at EarningsBeats, and I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes or so as we take a look at uh, pre-market action and uh, summarize what's been going on in the market and maybe predict a little bit what might be happening down the road. We'll see. Um, yesterday was an interesting day, and we're going to get into that in just a couple minutes, but um, saw some reversals. Um, the thing is, normally those reversals after a steady move to the upside, like after four, five, six straight days of going up, those candles would definitely have been more topping candles. So they're still topping candles. They're still reversal candles, but they're kind of reversing sideways action, uh, which doesn't uh, make a whole lot of sense. But anyway, we're going to take a look at some of those candlesticks and some of the areas of the market where I think we need to focus on, because if we do clear those candles from yesterday, uh, it would be a really very bullish signal. And more so maybe in some of those value areas that we've talked about. Real estate's really been doing well. Looked like it was making a pretty significant breakout yesterday. And then we saw it pull back and finish near the low of the day. So uh, again, a lot of those candles are maybe a little cloudy, um, but I'm still very bullish about the market from an intermediate to longer term uh, standpoint, I think we go a lot higher. I think we're going to see all time highs. I think it's still possible we see them in December, but if not December, I think it'll be in the first quarter of next year. Um, let's see, we had uh, initial jobless claims out. They were a little bit higher than expected, about 7,000 claims higher than expected. Um, we also had the um, uh, personal income, personal spending out, both came in as expected, rising two tenths of 1%. Uh, I did find it interesting though that the PCE, the headline PCE number was flat. Expectation was for a rise of one tenth of 1%. But when we get down to the core P PCI number, the core PCI actually was as expected. So uh, not really a whole lot there on the inflation front, but it seems like all the inflation news that we've been getting is suggesting that inflation has already topped, is rolling over. That's what we've been talking about for months on here. And I don't understand the argument at this point for the Fed to even consider raising rates. I think the consideration now should be when they're going to start cutting. Um, and as long as our economy stays somewhat strong, I don't think they're going to do anything. And right now, I mean, we just had the GDP, second quarter GDP come out earlier this week or excuse me, third quarter GDP, but it was the second estimate. And it was raised from the first quarter. First quarter was a surprise when it came in at 4.9%, but it got raised to 5.2%. So we've got a really nice market um, or economy and a nice market. Um, and with the backdrop of potentially lower rates ahead. I mean, again, I've said this before, this is nirvana for equities. So longer term, I see nothing but higher prices coming. But in the short term, you know, if you're a short term trader, what do you do with yesterday's action? Well, we'll get into that and talk about that in just a little bit. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Still got some earnings coming out. Um, Salesforce.com blew away their numbers yesterday. And let me give you the number there. Um, I know they were up big yesterday. Yeah, they're up $20, almost 9% today. Closing yesterday at 230, today at 250. So uh, Salesforce.com clearly adding to some of the bullishness that we've seen. And uh, by the way, earnings for this latest quarter, and I always just kind of chuckle when you go, when we get ready for every earnings quarter, because you almost always, almost always see articles coming out about how earnings are going to disappoint this quarter. They hardly ever disappoint. In fact, over history, 60, I think it's 67% of companies, when they report, they beat estimates. That's historically. This last quarter was over 80% of companies. And I just updated our raised guidance chart list, and there are a ton of companies that are raising guidance. So don't listen to the media. Don't listen to what you're hearing on the news. I'm telling you the facts. I don't even know how people can continue to talk about some of the things they talk about based on the, the facts that are out there. But anyway, they do, and they manipulate the market. I call them influencers. You know, you've got your market makers, which are part of the big financial firms, the big Wall Street firms. And then you have what I call your market influencers, which show up on CNBC 
and just spew a bunch of information. A lot of times makes no sense, contradicts other information, and yet it's presented like it's fact. Anyway, all right, end of this rant. Um, let's go ahead and talk about um, the, the action from yesterday. So we have the uh, Dow Jones yesterday, pretty flat, rising 13 points. S&P 500 down four. That was down almost one-tenth of 1%. One NASDAQ down 23, so it was a little bit more than one-tenth of 1%. One Mid-caps finished up a little more than one-third of 1%, one gaining 10 points. And the Russell 2000 was up about a half percent. Um, gaining about one full percentage point. Transport's flat after being up earlier in the day. They were they ended up flat. Um, real estate leading again. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but real estate's been on the top of this leaderboard quite a bit, top of the sector leaderboard um, over the past probably 30 days or so. Real estate's having a really good run. And a lot of it's just because it was so beaten down with rates going up and so forth, worried about inflation uh, pushing rates even higher. Um, that's not happening. And I think now you're seeing a lot of rotation back into that group. Financials up about uh, seven tenths of 1%. Materials up about a half of 1%. Those were your three leaders. Notice all three of those really are more, um, more value oriented, dividend paying companies. A lot of those that fall in those, those three sectors pay nice dividends. Um, so maybe we're seeing a little bit of that rotation, which is not unusual at all during the fourth quarter. Um, and even throughout this secular bull market, bull market that we've been in for the last 11 years, we have seen uh, during the months of December and a lot of times during the third calendar month of every quarter. So March, June, September and December, that's when we tend to see the dividend payers do a little bit better. So I wouldn't get too upset or too concerned if we start to see what we saw yesterday, a little bit more money rotating toward some of those value oriented areas because historically that's what we've come to expect. Um, from an industry group perspective, furnishings leading 2.4% yesterday. Asset managers, haven't talked a whole lot about those guys, but look at the last month. This has been a group that has really done well. And uh, again, leader among the leaders yesterday. And then containers and packaging in that materials area, leading yesterday also gaining more than 2%. So all in all, pretty good action. Uh, I should mention also that crude oil today, is up another 1.4%. All of a sudden, crude oil starting to make a push back to the upside. It's nearing $79 a barrel. U.S. 10-year Treasury yield up five basis points today, but that, it's still 4.32%. We closed yesterday at 4.27%, growing closer and closer and closer to that topping head and shoulder pattern, the measurement, which I suggested would take us down to about 4.1%, at least initially. We got to 4.27 yesterday. I think we got lower than that intraday, maybe 4.25 before turning back up a little bit. Now this morning, we see us moving back a little bit to the upside. I think all of this still is within the confines of a downtrend in the 10-year Treasury yield. So I I mean, I think the market's kind of acting like I thought it would in the fourth quarter. I saw rates coming back down. I thought we'd have a big surge in the market. And that's what we've been seeing. Um, let's move on to the 10-year Treasury yield, which today right there you can see up uh, to that 4.32% level. I mean, anytime, even when you're in a downtrend, you can go up and you can test that 20-day. Right now, that 20-day is up close to 450. So this move to the upside in the 10-year Treasury yield easily could go up another 10, maybe even 15 basis points. But from there, I think we will probably head back to the downside. Ultimately, making our measurement down at 4.10%. The S&P 500. All right, so let's talk a little bit about these candlesticks. Now, you know, when I'm looking at the S&P, I'm seeing a couple of things. I'm seeing the PPO, which is up near a high, that 1.5 level, which we got just above. I mean, if you go back and you look at some of these stretched moves to the upside, we got to about 1.5 on the PPO. And then you can see we kind of rolled over, went down. We got up here, we rolled over, had a little bit of weakness before going higher. Um, here, we had actually a negative divergence. That was back in July. We don't have to worry about that right now. Um, that might come down the road, maybe after December, maybe even in the middle of January, when we get through this bullish period. If we see negative divergences, that would be something maybe to hunker down a little bit as we go into February, March. Um, so we were breaking out again yesterday on the S&P 500. We had all these pre these prior tops covered. I mean, we were off and running in the morning yesterday, early in the morning. 
But then we saw selling throughout much of the day. And let me show you a five day chart, 10 minute. Here was that buying. It looked really good in the morning. Here we go. I mean, we were up getting close to 4,600 on the S&P 500. I think we uh, eventually there, we topped out almost 4,588. So only 12 points away. That correction, it basically is gone. I mean, from 4,600 to 4,100, we reversed it in 30 days. Took us over three months to go down, reversed back to the upside in just 30 days. I mean, this market wants to go higher, but we have to respect that 4,600 level. And we certainly have to respect the gap up, the early morning strength, and then the selling throughout the balance of the day to finish near the low of the day and to actually finish down on the day. So that's why you've got that red filled candle right here, because you're actually finishing down on the day. We gapped up, traded up, and then came back down, closing on the low of the day and below the prior day's close. So when I see that and I see the PPO rolling over and I know the history of the market pulling back here, even just recent history, that tells me maybe we need to pause or at least let the market prove to us that it wants to continue to push to the upside. I mean, I, as I've said, I think the S&P 500 goes past 4,600. I think it could threaten and possibly even take out the 4,819 all-time high during December. That might be a little bit of a stretch because we're talking about still from here, another 370 points. That would be a really big month of December to get there, but I wouldn't rule it out. And especially on the S&P, because remember, the S&P is a little bit more value oriented. So we see some bigger rotation into those dividend payers. The S&P 500 would certainly take more advantage of that than, say, the NASDAQ 100, which is more growth oriented and less uh, value oriented. The NDX, the NDX, um, you can see right here, 15,987, we closed, but we were over 16,000 easily. Uh, got to 16,166 before reversing and coming back down. And in this case, you can see that the NDX is already above the July high. It already erased all of that correction and broke to a new high. So it wouldn't be bad if we see some rotation. Just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm just saying that historically, it does happen more often than not. And based on what I'm seeing on the chart, I wouldn't be surprised. To see, you know, if we if the S and P goes higher, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Nasdaq go up as well. I just think the S and P might do better this month, and it is November thirtieth. So believe it or not, we're one day away from starting last month of twenty twenty three. All right, I want to talk a little bit about the small caps because small caps had a chance to do something much bigger because this group has been beaten down on a relative basis. Now, on an absolute basis, it also has had a great November, made a big run. But this is the time of the year when small caps really love to run. So yesterday, I mean, it got up within a penny of its earlier high back here from, what was that November 15th, the day after the CPI report was released. I think that was the day the PPI came out, the uh, October PPI. Anyway, we got up to 181.76. I swear I don't make this stuff up. One. 81.76 was the high. What was the high yesterday? 181.75. One penny or 0 0.01 of a point um, on the uh, IWM. Really just one penny. Think about that. After this huge move up, we go up, we get within one penny. And I told members yesterday in our live trading room, I was in the IWM. I sold it. I ended up getting out at 181.55. But we got right up to that level and I was watching it. I was like, okay, we're gonna, are we going to do it? And we started backing off and I said, all right, I got to see it first. I do not want to come up one penny short of breaking out and then watch this thing go back to the 20-day moving average and sit in it the whole time. So I actually sold my IWM yesterday at that 181.55 level. And I, I probably would have sold at 181.75 if I could have hit the buttons a little faster. Um, but because I wanted to see it, I wanted to see that breakout. And so here we are, we still haven't seen that breakout. Now look at this five day uh, or yeah, five day, 10 minute chart. And look, we went straight up. This is from 178 to 181.75 in 30 minutes. And literally we couldn't get one more penny out of this move. 
Now, I'm not going to say prices are manipulated, but they sure do look like they're manipulated. I mean, one penny could make it any more obvious. Maybe get up right to 181.76. Anyway, um, the selling started from there. We kind of, you know, the, the selling tapered off middle of the day. And then we saw more selling into the close. Now, normally, when I see early morning strength like this and selling throughout the day, I'm really going to start turning more bearish intraday. I got one problem, well, a couple problems with that here. I mean, I am still somewhat bearish short term, but I don't rule out a move right back up and a breakout today. That would not shock me. So, and the reason I say that is look at the action before we had this potential reversing candle. Do you see an uptrend over the last four days? Because I don't. I just see a lot of whipsaw in the morning, back and forth in the afternoon and into the close. And basically over the last four days, we've gone nowhere. I, I see this as consolidation more than anything. So what are you reversing? I mean, it wouldn't shock me. And futures are up. Um, but if I add, let's see, how many bars are there? In a 10 minute, that's three. Well, it's uh, six and a half hours. So that's going to be 63. There's six. And, oh, 36. Let's do like 39. That should give me a full day. There we go. So I'm going to annotate this because what I will show you is that this, even though it was selling all day, we do have a higher high and a higher low. So what if we gapped up here and, you know, did this? Whoops, did this. And then I don't know, maybe did something like, you know, this. And then, you know, maybe kept this uptrend intact. And then maybe something like this later today. And then, you know, maybe sideways action over here. And then all of a sudden, end of the day, we'd still have this nice little uptrend in play. So one thing I'll be watching if we gap up is do we really have a... Um, do we make a clear breakdown of the low from yesterday? Because if we gap up and we hold that low and we start making our way back toward this high again, this could be the breakout day. So, I mean, it's a little bit confusing. I'm not, you know, not going to sugarcoat this. This is kind of an interesting area for the market because there are so many key resistance levels. I mean, this isn't just, you know, some day in the middle of a range. I mean, this was a big breakout level that the, the IWM was trying to take out yesterday, big in, in the sense of short to intermediate term, not long term. Um, but let me show you that daily chart again. So here was the gap. This is the gap down from 179.02. And then we had a couple of closes up at a, like 179.33. And so right around that level is where we've really struggled. I mean, that's going back the last 10 weeks or so that we haven't really had a... Um, you know, a clear breakout. And we had that yesterday and we had it about two weeks ago, but we couldn't hold it and we came back down. So it's a failure. We've had a couple of big failures at this level and finished back at 178.98, which is below all of this, you know, that we were trying to break out. So in the short term, would I be shocked if we go down the 20 day? No. But would I be shocked if we gap up and go right back up again? No. Um, and I don't know what to tell you because I think it's a coin flip. Now, what I can tell you is that I remain very bullish for December and extremely bullish going into the start of 2024. Short term, how we get there, I'm not quite sure. Um, like I said, I took a little bit off the table yesterday because I just felt like the IWM had its chance and did not print the high. And I was just simply waiting for the high to be printed. If we had gone back up later in the day and gone through that this level right over here at 181.76, I'd have been right back in. I don't mind giving up that little bit. If I go out at 181.55 and I get back in at 182.10 or 182.50, I don't care. That, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is holding through a false breakout and going back down another 4 or $5. That's what potentially bothers me. So it was just being a little bit you know, taking a little bit of risk off the table just to see what the market was going to do the rest of the day. And we never really got much in the way of sustained buying. So that's what I'm looking for today. 
The, the gap up's nice, but if we gap up, we go right back to a new low, take out yesterday's low, not going to be very excited about that. If on the other hand, we gap up and we work our way up throughout the day, kind of doing the opposite of what we did yesterday, that to me would be more of an indication that this uptrend is continuing and we're likely to move back toward that 190 level. Transports, transports, still, you know, basically flat yesterday, still in this, what I think is a reverse right shoulder, left shoulder, neckline, head, neckline, right shoulder. Next move to the upside would break out above 15.2, would be extremely bullish. All right, moving on, chart of the day. Um, before I go into the chart of the day, and this is actually a chart I wanted to cover yesterday for you, and I forgot. I said I'd try to do it by the end of the show, and by the end of the show, I was already onto a, other things, and I just forgot about it. But anyway, before I go into that, um, I do want to encourage you to try us 30 days if you haven't already. 30-day um, no-cost trial. You do have to give credit card for that. But we will make sure you are not charged without notifying you that your 30-day period is ending. Um, the other reason why it's great to check us out now is we are three days away now. Sunday is our last day of our fall special. Um, a lot of members have taken advantage of it. We thank you. It's obviously in your best interest if you want to remain a member because you're going to pay a lot less. So check out that fall special. Try us for the 30 days. And if you just want to go in and sign up for a free newsletter, we've got you covered there as well. Uh, here, this does not require a credit card. Name and an email address. Subscribe. We'd love to have you. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we will send you an email. Um, two paragraphs and a chart. Try to make it very simple. Um, I think it's very educational. Could be trading candidates in there if you're interested, but um, from our standpoint, we try to make it educational. So check all that out. So for today, what I wanted to what I wanted to show you was gold. So yesterday, gold had a good day, and actually, I was look looking to see what gold. I was going to check it out. Yeah, gold today is down 11, so it's back down to 2,036 per ounce, um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because this is showing 2,067. But anyway, look at this uh, this five-year weekly chart. What would you say about gold if you just looked at this absolute chart? I mean, I know what I would say. I would say, geez, it looks like it's going to make a breakout here. Um, if this holds through Friday, we'll have a, the highest weekly close on gold that we've had since 20, August, early August 2020. Um, or maybe one of these. I can't tell which one was the weekly close, the highest close. But Whatever it was, we're break. Look, right now it looks like we're breaking out. Of course, today, right now, I'm showing 2,036. Um, at least that's what CNBC.com is showing, and so um, that would be down 31 from where uh, we closed yesterday, and would not be getting a breakout. So let's see where we close the week. But on the surface, I mean, it looks like we're making a pretty good run in gold. I think everybody would agree with that. We've been trending higher. Yesterday was a really nice close, but above 2,050, we certainly. Haven't seen that very often. Um, and so I thought what I would do is show you, um, actually, before we even do that, look at the monthly gold. I mean, this looks like maybe some kind of consolidation after a lengthy uptrend. Looks looks like gold could break out here. I mean, just based on what I know about technical analysis, it looks like a nice consolidation pattern, maybe a continuation pattern after an uptrend. Looks to me like we're getting a nice breakout, right? Maybe, but the question I always come back to is what's gold doing relative to the S&P 500? Because gold is usually thought of not as a normal investment. It's usually thought of as a hedge versus the S&P 500. So the best time to be in gold versus the S&P 500 is when it's outperforming it, right? I mean, if gold's not outperforming the S&P 500, then wouldn't you still want to be in the S&P 500? Or do you want to hedge with something that's underperforming? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a PA. I didn't get a PhD in mathematics, but pretty smart mathematically. I'll take the S and P 500 return if it's beating gold. Well, then let's like look at the 15 year monthly relative strength chart of gold. Yes, gold looks great right now on the weekly chart, on the daily chart, on the monthly chart, even on an absolute basis. What do you think of it when you look at it here on a relative basis? Does it still look great to you? Is this something you want to be invested in? I mean, it topped in 2011, and I think it's had pretty, I mean, we had a nice little pop with the uh, pandemic, 
Because anytime the volatility index is going up and people are panicked, gold becomes more of a hedge, a better hedge. And I've said that before. Gold, best time to own gold is when the volatility index is up above 20. If the, if the VIX is below 20, I have no interest in owning gold. I mean, because usually the stock market does well. Stock market does well. A hedge like gold is not going to do well on a relative basis. So yeah, you might get a couple of periods when the VIX takes off and you might get a little bit of action relative strength in gold. But look at the last 12 years since 2011. I mean, how often would you really truly want to be in gold versus the S&P? Anyway, that's all I had here. Um, and others are saying, well, you know, the dollar's falling back. And so if the dollar's falling back, that's good for gold. Well, again, that doesn't mean gold outperforms the S&P. The dollar falling because the gold is denominated in dollars. Yes. Generally speaking, when the dollar goes down, gold goes up. When the dollar goes up, gold goes down. And it's even more pronounced if you're looking at the relative strength. But let me show you, and this is what I use to kind of track the dollar. I like to look at our 10-year treasury yield here in the U.S. versus Germany's 10-year treasury yield. Um, our two countries are somewhat, are quite a bit positively correlated in both our bond markets and our stock markets. And so I think it's the perfect pair to take a look at. So all I'm doing is looking at the 10-year treasury yield here in the U.S., and I'm subtracting the 10-year treasury yield in Germany. So which is, are we going up versus Germany? Or are we going down versus Germany? And I think as you look here, you'll see that interest rates are basically over the long term going up versus Germany. At least that's what I would say. And the dollar generally throughout this period has been going higher. Now, it's not perfect correlation. I mean, you'll see some big drops. Here we actually saw the dollar going up slightly for a while. And that was happening while this yield was going down. So it's not a perfect correlation, but as I just kind of look big picture and ignore the individual runs here and there, I see interest rates going higher in the U.S. versus the versus Germany, which to me is indicative of a stronger economy. Stronger economy economy means stronger dollar, stronger currency, and so the dollar has been going up with it. Just watch these highs right here, because if we break out. If the 10-year treasury yield here in the U.S. breaks out above that 205, 210 level versus Germany, I would not be expecting the dollar to fall. And so if we get that breakout and the dollar goes up, and I already believe the stock market's going up, I would not want to be in gold. Just saying. So that's the way I'm looking at right now. I've been bearish gold on a relative basis. Let me point that out. Hey, I can see an uptrend. I didn't see golds going up, but it's like looking at two semiconductor stocks. If they're both going up, do you want to own both of them? Or do you want to own the one that's outperforming the other one for the last 12 years? I mean, is that really a question that needs to be answered? All right, let's keep moving. Uh, market opens in a minute. XLRE, I wanted to show you this topping candle and I'll quickly annotate. I mean, if you go back several months, um, we were talking about a high right about there after this gap down in August. We have not been able to get through that level. And then the top of the gap would be somewhere right in there. So XLRE made a big move, but we're just now getting up to this key zone. So be careful there. And that reversal. This is a little bit more often an uptrend. So let's see if, you know, maybe we get a little pullback in real estate. But I believe if we do, it's going to be a viable pullback. Financials. Again, long tail yesterday. Let's annotate this. I mean, off of this gap down right here, all the way back in February, the March reaction high, where'd it go to? 35.50. How about July? 35.50. Yesterday, we were above 35.50, but then we closed at 35 or below 3550 actually right on 3550 so another value oriented area that could pull back but if it does i think it's viable i see the both of these eventually going through and breaking out maybe it happens today i saw the dow was up i mean the futures on the dow and actually we could probably just get rid of this and look at what's going on in the market 
because it is 930. So if we look at the Dow, yep, gapping up, trying to take out this uh, July high. So the Dow looks great here. Um, the XLF gapping up, yeah, a little bit above that 3550. If it takes out yesterday's high and finishes there, that would be bullish. XLRE, yeah, that one's coming down a little bit. Um, IWM, let's see what's going on there. Well, it gapped up. Now it's coming back down, sitting at about 180. Got up to 180.41. Yeah, so watch this. Here's that gap up. So that's what I was talking about when I annotated earlier. Is this now going to maybe pull back a little and then go up? Is it just going to take off, pull back later? And then where do we finish today? That's probably going to be the biggest thing. I don't want to see another gap up and sell off day up here at this 179 area. I want to see this now that we opened above 180, which is even higher than the open yesterday. I want this to take off. And I'm going to end with that. Um, let's see what happens in the market today. End of November, we've got December coming. Um, I obviously want to thank everyone who has been supporting us at Earnings Beats. We've got a great offer, our fall special. Check that out. Um, again, if you don't do that, you can help us by liking our videos, uh, subscribing to our channel. All of that helps us with YouTube. So just help us any way you can, um, and we'll keep bringing you the information that we do. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I uh, will be back on Tuesday. Happy trading.